special class, uh, uh, sort of a, a sensitive class of people, is how I always refer to them. Uh, and I just don't want, I don't know, I don't want all the bad that the internet can be to sort of reach into that space, especially if somebody recognizes me. I know 
this was I think the first ever story time that I thought I would do and that I've kind of shied away from doing and I was just like you know what I am I'm just going to, to throw on the camera and start talking about it it's my first experience at a gay bar and um, uh, it allows me to kind of open up about myself a little bit as well which I find to be quite interesting so uh, like okay well there we go hey I think I'm interesting in some respect okay look at me look at me therapizing myself in front of all of you <laughs> but um, anyway so last okay, I'll start with last year uh, sort of around this time especially like mid-May um, like I was done. <laughs> I was working at Starbucks. And if you know, if you have worked, if you worked at Starbucks between like, um, call it August of 2022 through to June, because that's when I left of 2023, you will know something shifted about the culture, the behind-the-counter culture at Starbucks. And especially if you had worked there for a long time, like I had worked there for two years, um, by the time uh, December, or no, yeah, by the time December had rolled around, um, two years and two months, uh, by the time December of 2022 had rolled around, and I was just in this shift and like two years is a long time for somebody working at Starbucks. Um, usually the people I worked with had been there around a year. Um, our store was remarkable though because we had uh, opened up our store. Our store was new in um, October of 2021. Um, and so, having transferred there from a, a, a store that I had started at, um, basically on the year anniversary of me working at Starbucks, we had all been at the company for quite a long time, and any of the new people had quickly sort of integrated. We were probably one of the oldest Starbuckses on average at at that time, especially, like, we had a lot of sort of, like, uh, usually Starbucks's hover around the average age of 20, I would say, 20 to 21 or 2, um, but our Starbucks easily, our average age was probably 30, um, which is remarkable at Starbucks, and, and they would talk to us about it all the time, and how smoothly we would run and how mature our store was, although there was drama. I could easily do another story time about Starbucks. Just all the bullshit that comes with working at one. Sometimes. It, it, it depends on the ones that you work at. But, um, anyway, a lot of us in this time frame, like I mentioned, August 2022 to around, say, like, let's call it August 2022 to February of 2023, we had noticed this shift in the way things were done, especially regarding scheduling, and especially regarding hours and things like that. All of a sudden, hours became piss poor, and they always kind of had been with Starbucks. Like, I would never say that I was fully happy with the amount of hours that I was getting at that new store specifically. Um, but we were always decently staffed at the new store. And then all of a sudden, it was like December of 2022 rolls around, and we are getting like the most whacked out scheduling that I had ever seen there. And all of a sudden, my manager, who I had loved up until that point, was like, well, this is how we've always done it. And this is how like it, it should be like, look in your barista handbook. And at 
it's like, I, uh, yeah, no, 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 we're not playing that card here. Um, and it was like, it was such a, a drastic shift that it was like, what the fuck is happening here? Like, we're being gaslit, first of all. Second of all, nobody can get hours at, um, at Starbucks. You need to achieve over a certain amount of hours to be eligible for benefits. And, um, because of the COVID, uh, sort of, uh, because of, can we say pandemic on YouTube now? Whatever. Um, who cares? <laughs> I can talk about what I want. But because of that, the hours threshold was sitting at around 16 hours per week. That would get you, uh, sort of, to eligibility for, uh, for benefits. They were considering, or considering raising it back up to, um, back up to 20 hours per week. And all of a sudden, nobody's getting 20 hours per week. me to 
say that and she was like she always did appreciate honesty and truly lots of starbucks managers do not i was lucky that i did not get fired or at least written up um to a final morning kind of situation and she was like okay but let's talk about it so she sat me down and we had this conversation and I was constantly saying, I was like, this is not the workplace that it used to be. I'm not getting the hours that I used to get. The, the standards are changing. The goalposts are constantly shifting. Um, the, the priorities that the company had for us were completely off kilter to what they had been. And it, I was like very honest with her about it. And she was like, there was no answer of I hear you. It was all just, and this is how it had been for, like, since probably March of 2023 when things got really, really bad, and I don't deal well in an environment, I don't exist well in an environment where I'm not either A, being listened to, or B, there are illogical changes being made. If they are change for the sake of change, I fucking hate it, and that's not because I dislike change, or I can't deal with it, or whatever. It's because I just, my brain works too logically for something like, oh, now you have to ask every customer for their name in drive through It's like, are you kidding me? Nobody wants to give me their name in drive through They want me, and I was a morning worker. I worked mornings, and I was like, they want me to give them their coffee. They want me to take their order and take it right. And that's essentially it. If they want to chat, they'll chat, but they don't want to chat for long. It's, oh. Anyway, so I expressed all of this, and the answer was basically like, well, this is just how it's always been, which was patently false. And I just told her, I was like, to be very honest, this conversation has not satisfied me. showing back up to work. I'm not going to work this shift, and I will not be working any of my other scheduled shifts, ever, because I am quitting. And she said, I need a letter of resignation from you. I took a piece of paper from the printer, and I just wrote out my resignation, and this was in June of 2023. And that was that was that. And looking back on it, I haven't really unpacked this. I don't think ever really I have with a couple of good friends, but never again like thinking about it like this. It, it's really crazy to think about. But anyway, this then led all of the people at, like who were working on the floor that day, um, really sweet. They all were like, we understand, we love you, Ryan. Everything was so cordial and amazing. And then I, I went in, like, basically the next day to get a drink, because um, a bunch of my good friends wanted to see me again. And they were either wearing their pride shirts, or they were wearing these shirts that we made were like green stars on the front of them. They were a white shirt with a green star on the front of them. Um, because it, it was, it was like a thing. Um, the, 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 uh, is it the digital, the digital production manager guy who does the cartwheels? If you know what I'm talking about, you know. But we were all him for Halloween and, and some of us, or some of them were wearing those shirts and, and it was just really sweet. But that is how then we decided to go out to a bar. And I had not been out to a bar for years at this point. And my friends were like, well, we need to go out to celebrate the fact that you're quitting. So we went to, um, I don't know if other places have this, but we went to a place called the Rec Room, um, which is sort of like a modern day Dave and Buster's kind of thing for, for, for all ages. And, um, decided to carry on to a couple of bars downtown and there's one bar where you can get really cheap shots downtown there's one bar where you can get really good 
best friend from Starbucks, um, she was like, well, there's this place called by, uh, close by called ZVRCH, like a church, and it's apparently a really good dance club, but there was also the gay bar literally just on the corner of that street that church was on, and church was fully lined up, and I was like, that looks like a pride flag, and I was fully, um, inebriated <laughs> at this point, and I was like, we should just go to the gay bar, and in our party, in our group, um, one of my friends is bi, there's me, so asexual and gay, uh, my best friend, who is a straight woman, who I believe would flex, um, and well, I have seen her make out with a couple of girls, but I think that's just like a drunk club thing, so, I mean, you know, um, we've all kind of witnessed that with one of our friends or another. Um, one of the ladies who I worked with, who was essentially the store mom, she's a fantastic person, and then, um, uh, the one straight guy who had literally, like, just had his 18th birthday a couple of weeks, uh, or maybe a couple of months, oh yeah, because it's in February, so many months before this, so, um, they were at varying levels of okay, but it was kind of my night, um, so I felt like I was able to be selfish just a little bit, <laughs> and so we went to the gay bar, and it turns out that it's like some glow night thing that they have going on, and we chose to go on a Saturday, of course, um, and cover at the front door, and when I tell you, because it's, it's a place that is sort of like, it's underground, kind of, um, it's down, like, the, the, the storefront, I guess, is, is at street level, but you walk down some steps, and it's basically in a basement, when I tell you, when I walked down those steps, I walked into heaven, I walked into heaven, it was literally one of the best places I have ever been, and I am not a person who enjoys, like, going out to bars and things like that traditionally. It's sort of like, this place was just, there's, 
is his home. I can't tell what those people's pronouns are. <laughs> they look gorgeous. Both of them in some respect. I would want to have like a cuddle session with. <laughs> Which I realize when I say that to me that's like the most intimate thing I can imagine. Um, mostly because I am not necessarily the most sexual person out there. Um, funny somebody might call me asexual.
night carries on and I danced. Oh my god, I can't believe I'm gonna say this, but I danced in a cage and I realized that's not like, <laughs> that's not really like, oh my god, what? But, and, and it's not like a, a cage where they lock you in or anything or anything like that. It was just like in the bars of her so loose that you can sort of just slip in. And I danced in a cage and at one point there was, um, person I later confirmed had uh, used his heat and pronouns, but there was a guy who slipped in there with me and like, I, I danced with somebody and in a way where I didn't feel like I needed to be anything but myself and I pretty much, the way that I figured out his pronouns Sorry if 